Hello everyone, I've driven this morning to the very bottom of our wonderful state, nearly to Florida. Many of you may not know that Georgia is the largest state by land area east of the Mississippi River, nearly 60,000 square miles. So it's a long way from one end of our state to the other. You've probably guessed that I'm in Valdosta at the headquarters of Scruggs Concrete, and I'm here with Rusty Ingram this morning. I must confess, when I think about Rusty Ingram, the first thing that comes to mind is not Scruggs or even concrete, but bingo at Ponte Vedra. Rusty, how many years have you been running bingo at the annual meeting? Well, uh, I would say that it's at least uh, 10 to 15 years. Joel Hammond and myself, uh, took that on after W.L. Maddox and, and uh, Walter Harvard passed the torch down to us, and uh, we bought a new bingo machine, and we've enjoyed it as much as the crowd has. Well, if you've not uh, been involved at bingo at Ponte Vedra with the GRMCA, you, you have missed out because it is so exciting, especially when you see a little 10-year-old girl scream bingo on a $1,000 card. It's just... Um, it's so exciting. Well, listen, Rusty, let's just dive into the interview. And I always like to begin by uh, just getting kind of a biographical sketch. You know, just give me, tell us about yourself, you know, and your, your, your about you. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, I was raised in uh, Moultrie, Georgia, about 40 to 50 miles from here. Um, my family was originally from the Carolinas and we moved down into into South Georgia uh, in I guess the late 50s, early 60s. Um, but I went to Moultrie High School uh, over. Uh, it's now Cockle County High School, but uh, that's where I uh, had my uh, grammar education and uh, <laughs> high school education. Uh, and moved up. I went to uh, Southern Tech up in Marietta, uh, got my um, uh, civil engineering degree there, and uh, uh, then came back to South Georgia to uh, jump in the ready-mix business. So that, that's the extent of that. Well, let's hear, I'm, I'm really eager to hear, you've talked before we began the interview, you were beginning to tell me a little bit about Scruggs, which I don't know all the details, and I know our listeners are, are curious to hear the history, so give us the history of Scruggs Ready Mix. Well, in, uh, back in 1963, um, the company was founded by Mr. Fred Scruggs. Uh, he had two sons, <clears throat> uh, Kenny and Farrell. Um, they were in the, the sand business, uh, Bannock Burn Sand Company uh, was their their first uh, business they got into, and, and um, that's about the time the I-75 was coming along and being built and other projects around. Uh, but they first started off, from what I understand, was just a sand truck and, and a sand mine. And in 1963, they uh, bought a, a ready-mix plant from uh, Milton Mertz, Mertz Manufacturing. Um, Put that up, and they. Uh, I, I actually called Farrell and, and got some information from him when I uh, uh, knew I was going to do this interview. He said they started <laughs> off with uh, two B model Mac uh, gasoline engine mixture trucks, and um, that was. Uh, they also were uh, in the uh, the land clearing and grading business, so. Uh, they started off, there was a couple of other small ready-mix plants here in, in Valdosta area, uh, but they were in the, the grading business and the contracting business and eventually got into asphalt and uh, became, uh, changed the name to The Scruggs Company um, and then uh, progressed to get a little bigger and, and in 1974 we uh, expanded the operation to include another concrete plant which was in Moultrie and uh, that's when my dad uh, Pete Ingram uh, at the 
We got a train. You, you got if you if you're near a ready mix plant, you're going to be near a railroad track. So, but uh, anyway, my dad uh, came on board with uh, the Scruggs Company in 1974, um, and over in Moultrie, and uh, uh, I've I've really never had any other job except uh, working for my dad and working in the summer times. Uh, I tried once or twice to to wander off for a summer job but then I'd come right back so um, so I started with 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 my dad and and worked all through high school and worked through college on the in the summers and then um, after I got out of that came back and and um, uh, just uh, continued to uh, actually when I came back from uh, from college I actually came down and started to work with uh, Farrell and Kenny in in Valdosta area uh, in the general contracting work to begin with. Um, did that for about a year and, and then the opening came up for, uh, to operate the, the Valdosta main plant and so Kenny uh, convinced me that that was a, would be the way to go and, and so uh, I came on board with, with him down here. Um, and then in 1980 the, the company split, the asphalt uh, and grading business went in one direction and the concrete uh, went in another. So we split the company at that time. Uh, we, we kept the name Scruggs Concrete and the Scruggs Company uh, stayed on in, in, uh, in the asphalt and the contracting work. Um, and both companies uh, grew and, and, and have done extremely well since then. Um, when when in '74 we when they uh, started the location in Moultrie, we also started uh, our concrete block and building materials business at that time, uh, which my dad was already involved with. So um, that's when we started uh, progressing that in the Valdosta area as well. Um, from that time forward, uh, and um, like I said, in 19. 80 when we split we we kept uh growing the business actually we, we opened up a plant in madison florida at that time um it's still there today and uh we just uh from how far how far is, is madison uh, from we're probably 30 35 miles away from uh here to madison and uh, and then we would uh continue to grow the business uh Every two or three years, we would add a plant on here, uh, and would stay somewhere between thirty and thirty-five miles away, and just put a little footprint, which worked fairly well for us, uh, which complemented our our building material in the concrete block side as well. So, um, the uh, around nineteen mid nineteen nineties, uh, uh, Kenny's son was Jim Scruggs. Uh, Jimbo is what we call him. He he came on board after he got out of college, and uh, he's been an instrumental part in our business as well, and uh, is still today. Uh, we had two other gentlemen, uh, uh, Randy Neesmith and uh, Tim Neesmith. They they came on board and have been a big part of our company's growth as well. Um, and Randy recently retired from our company after. 30 some odd years but uh, Tim still works with us but he, he runs our complete block operation but uh, but we started with, with one plant and uh, two in 74 and then and now we've got 12 plants wow. throughout the uh, Wow I didn't realize there were 12 so, plants yeah that's a big footprint well and we go from from uh, Thomasville on the, the west side over to Waycross on the on the east side let me ask you um what do you see today you've been in this business for many years you've seen a lot of changes um what do you see are the um the the big challenges facing the georgia ready mix producers what comes to mind when you when you you know I, I don't know if you'd go as far as to say it keeps you up at night or that extreme, but just 
things that you see, you know, kind of looking forward or, or the, the top issues for the Georgia producers? Well, you know, I've, I've been involved with the association for quite a few years. I've seen a lot of different uh, directors, and, and, and it's, it's, it's funny that you, we, we sit and talked a little bit beforehand, but, you know, everyone seems to uh, bring a, 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 a strong point. Every, every one of them has, like, one might have been heavy on promotions. The next one would have been heavy on the legislation side. Uh, but I really think today's the the environmental uh, footprint and the and the safety concept that we have. Um, I can remember back; uh, it's been twenty twenty five years ago. Safety was so they we had a it was like Thunder Thunder Bay Productions. Uh, the association oh. w was part of, and they came actually came down and did. Uh, um, safety videos at our plant and it and we found some the other day it was on some big vcr tapes but it, it was it was almost comical to see what was we thought was safety back then and and now we've improved it all so much since then but the the safety side um is only there to help us um the promotion side i think we we've, we've all benefited from that uh in the past um when i know when we we were trying to promote concrete parking lots and you know we we'd get out and that was tough for us because we were we were selling asphalt parking lots at the same time right, so it, right. it you know it it, yep. it it made a made a difference but uh you know i think one area uh that is our legislature side and, and 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 jimmy cotty did a great job with that and and he helped us with uh the sales tax situation which that was good but you know I, I our biggest i think one of the big concerns that i have is is the future of of some of our uh our our tort reform uh i i'm really concerned about lawsuits and and things that involve that uh, our company and, and the repercussions that we all stand from uh, that that is is a big concern of mine. Right, and that's as you know, the governor uh, Governor Kemp came out uh, last year and uh, promised that he was going to uh, make that a big priority uh, for this session, and and he's come off that a little bit, but there's still a lot of work going on there. And certainly the association and, and um, Emily uh, Engel, who's our director of governmental relations is heavily involved in that at the Capitol, uh, working to support that effort with the Georgia chamber. And so, but that's a, that is critical. And I, we hear that very, very often. Um, so as you look back, Rusty, uh, over the years, what are some of the things uh, that you're really proud of uh, as you look back over your life? What comes to mind that things that you look back with pride and, and delight? Well, you know, it it does me good to 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 try to bring uh, employees on and that that don't really know a whole lot about our industry and. And try to train them, and and, uh, and and especially if they enjoy this type of work, and to, to see them excel and, and learn this business, and um, and see them enjoy uh, selling a job, and and, and you know, uh, there's a lot of gratitude in that, and and um, sense of achievement, and and when um, I see a, a salesperson that has uh, gone out and sold the job with salesmanship as opposed to necessarily with price uh that that makes me feel good and um and and i, I get a lot of satisfaction in in seeing the success of uh, an employee well that really it kind of leads uh it leads into the, my next question for you because what i'm hearing you say is uh the um 
the, the pride that you've had is just working to develop uh, the people in your organization and see them succeed and, and flourish. And my next question for you is, uh, again, looking back, um, who were some of the people over the years that were very, very influential in, in your career and in your life? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think first and foremost, uh, my dad um, is, has been uh, my mentor and, uh, and, and he has uh, instilled in, in me and my whole family just to always uh, be the, the, the best that we could be and, and try to leave things better than when you started with it. And, uh, uh, you know, he's always uh, instilled that in, in all of his children and um the and and the good thing when i started with scruggs uh, having coming to valdosta and, and having someone like kenny uh who was almost like a another dad i mean he he i was still young uh, when i you know in the mid-20s when i came down here to valdosta and, and um uh, kenny uh took me on like a son and even though he had one he was a lot younger but uh you know he he was uh, enable me to uh, pro- progress in this business uh, just like he had and, uh, and, and we continue to do today. There, there's other uh, people within the business. Um, W.L. Maddox probably stands out as uh, one of the uh, he, he kind of you know walked softly and carried a big stick <laughs> and he, he you know walked to Harvard. These are old older old school people but they were uh two of the and joel hammond has been another uh person that's really been a, a person that i looked up and had learned from and i know that um in the in the past you've been you know directly involved in the association so i guess i've got a, a two-part question as i think about it the first question would be uh you know your your past involvement directly uh, with the GRMCA, and well, as you know, it was Georgia Concrete and Products Association early on. But that's part A. Tell 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 us a little bit about how you were were involved, and then the the second part would be for you to talk a little bit about the benefits to to the producers of being a member of our association. What what are the things that come to mind? So two part question. Well, the, being involved with the association over the years, and, and I've been on a few different committees, uh, and, and that gives you direct involvement uh, and makes you feel a part of the association um, and uh, in, in, it enables us to uh, bring back to the association things that are directly involved uh, that we need help with. Um, I remember back when the, the, the Sam Marson was had the association up, and, and I would uh, when I would go to Atlanta, I would swing by, and, and she would have videotapes of certain things that we where that would be uh, mixed designs or, or, or safety or environmental at that time. Uh, she would she would lend us the tapes. She said, you bring these back now. We got to put these back in the library. I said, okay, we do. And I think I've still got some back there on my shelf. <laughs> Never made it back. Right. But, uh, but um, I'm going to pause for that train to get by. So what was the second part of your question? So, so you, you, your involvement in the past was the, you know, you, you've worked on some of the committees. And so you've been involved for a for a number of years, and the, yeah, the other part of my question was, you know, um, the the benefits maybe that you've seen in the past, and what and the benefits that you're seeing presently to being a member. What are those benefits? What's the value uh, to to the folks in our industry? Well, and I think the the benefits are as are as much as you want to dive into it. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. Uh, our association has, uh, uh, even from the insurance side of it, uh, I remember years ago we, we, I, uh, the, we had a lawyer uh, basically on board that we could call and ask invi- and questions. Basically, it might even 
pertain to a, a workers comp situation or uh, we could we had avenues that we could find answers most in any whether it be insurance uh workers comp uh different areas that that we normally wouldn't have the answers ourselves but we could always find them and that's whether it, it could be even in uh, uh technical questions right. and that, and that's been a, a added plus and 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 by the way Rust, rusty that's what um you know, as I'm out and about and talking to to um, the uh, the leaders in the industry, I mean that's one of the common themes that that I hear is just the information exchange. Obviously, legal information that's the the nature of a trade association. We're we're allowed a lot of conversation about a lot of things, safety, environmental, and and uh, and and technical matters. We can we can discuss those openly and 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 um, com comfortably and that's what people really value plus i think um i think you'd say it's safe to say especially when you're at ponte vedra there's a lot of fun in friendship any comments on that well there there is and and you know just uh the the relationships that you form uh at ponte vedra um you know it whether it be from a associate member or a, a competitor on the other end of the state he actually wouldn't be a competitor but he uh someone in our same business we we share we share uh experiences uh and 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 things that happen to them and the way they handled them uh and and it could be on the golf course or it could be uh out by the beach or in the pool uh, listening to Curtis Gould, or <laughs> it, it, it is there are good times, and you know my family uh, has enjoyed that for many many years, and uh, we all enjoy my 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 kids uh, still think they're kids and and still want to go, and and they're thirty something years old now, so I, they they still get to go, so we have a great time. You know, it just it just uh, occurred to me. I I I'd forgotten one of the the the, uh, the impetus for this whole project. It it really began as best I remember. Now it was at Ponte Vedra last summer, and I don't remember which night it was. If it was Friday or Saturday, it doesn't matter. But I I came up on you and Gus and Joel, and y'all were right in the thick of it. You were reminiscing and just telling old war stories. And to watch the three of you, the energy, the animation, the, the, the delight, it really got my attention. And at that point, I think, you know, I thought to myself, I, we, we, need to we need to record and capture a lot of this. And Gus, by the way, has been, he's given me a box of all kinds of association memorabilia. We're, we've not got a, a final plan on how we're going to completely share a, a lot of that we're probably going to have something on on our website an area that we can just have the history and photographs mm -hmm. and so on and so forth we're still working on that because we want to preserve these great memories of a really great industry um, and uh, so uh, let's see I think I've got one more question uh, that I do like to ask I'm always curious to hear um, especially from from you know folks that have been in business for so long and um is is you know when you when you think about the the new people coming in young people coming on board you know uh, the advice what you what you would say you know you've got a uh, a chance to 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 uh, influence and say here here's some advice from a lot of years and a lot of successes and maybe a few mistakes here and there so what's that advice uh, for people coming in to, to ready mix? Well, I, I think one thing, and I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, compliment my wife for, uh, first of all, for putting up with these long hours. That's one thing that I think anybody in this business, they better have a strong family uh, relationship because there are gonna be some long hours. Uh, and I think anybody that, uh, that puts their whole heart into it. They're going to have to work the uh, the long hours and the the Saturdays and sometimes Sundays or whatever it takes to get the job done. And uh, you just to have a a a strong 
uh, relationship and family at the house. Everybody's got to buy in. Um, uh, I think that needs to be uh, first and foremost uh, explained, and um, because if you don't, it will it will uh, eventually rear its ugly head. And and uh, this is, uh, but you get to to uh, all, always uh, you know enjoy the benefits from it, and and. Um, I think that's one of the, the the best things that I could uh, uh, make sure that was out, laid out front. As far as laying, uh, as far as the the future, um, you know, we we've been blessed to uh, be able to bring on. Uh, we uh, Justin Womack is is part of my company. That's. Uh, um, going to be the the next generation uh of course jimbo's uh here and and uh and then justin's going to be uh following right behind uh taking my footsteps and and moving forward with him he's, he's a, a great asset to our company and um he's uh i'm glad he's on board and and i, I can only look for better things to happen uh, with him on board and, and with jimbo together yeah, and, and Justin is literally on board. He's on our board of directors. Absolutely, and uh, he's uh, he's going to be a uh, positive uh, asset to the association as well as our company. Well, Rusty, I'm so glad we we got to uh, finally have this interview. I was on my way down here about a month ago, and. I got off at Warner Robins to take a, a quick coffee break and was, was rear-ended um, in my Explorer. <laughs> I had to turn around and go home. So we quickly regrouped and got this, and got this visit scheduled, and I'm so glad we, we did it quickly. And it's so good, it's so good to be with you. And, uh, of course, um, looking very much looking forward to Ponte Vedra and Bingo yet again. So... Uh, I do, I do thank you, Rusty. I appreciate your friendship. Well, th uh, thank you for coming down. I'm glad you had a safe trip down this time. And uh, I, I want to uh, thank you for putting this together with the, for the association. Uh, I think this is uh, such a, a neat way to, to find out. Uh, so many of the independents throughout the state, or anybody in this business, has the same, usually the same uh, scenarios of events and and problems if it's a problem in north georgia it's a problem in south georgia if it's a, a good thing in south georgia it's a good thing everywhere so uh, i thank you for coming down and doing this and um, i'd also look forward to uh, uh ponte Vedra this coming year and i uh, hope you uh, win it bingo or your family does <laughs> thanks again take care